In this video, I am testing a Yugo 55A, one of only 300 sold here in New Zealand and the last one remaining in roadworthy condition. How terrible is it? Ah, the good old Yugo, uh, built by Zastava um, in Serbia, what was then Yugoslavia, uh, somewhere I have indeed visited um, a couple of years ago. But the uh, the 45, sorry, 55A we see here began life as um, a Fiat. It was meant to be a replacement for the 127, but in the end they decided to just keep going with what they were already making. And um, I think the 127 effectively ended up replaced by the Uno instead. So this is um, under the skin. It's a combination of Fiat 128 and 127. And uh, that means in terms of mechanical package, it's not actually too ancient. Uh, so you've got this lovely um, uh, Yugoslavian flag on the back, or is that the Serbian flag? Uh, I should be able to remember. But um, yeah, check out the New Zealand Yugo for more information about this car and Yugos surviving in New Zealand indeed. Uh, a, a very um, uh, sharply styled car I think. I think it was always fairly pleasant albeit clearly still a cheap car and th these were the days when a cheap car sort of looked it and felt it. Um, there were lots of cars usually from former, former or existing communist countries this car would have done battle with the likes of the Lada, also a cast off Fiat design, and uh, the Skoda, which owed its underpinnings more to Renault than anything. It was kind of developed from a Renault Dauphine platform. So here is the 1.1cc engine producing 55 brake horsepower. Quite an elderly design by this stage. I think it was introduced um, in the 1960s, it was the same engine used in the rear engine Fiat's uh, in um, 850 and then 903cc4. Um, various hoses, little, little radiator that's quite small but allows space for the distributor and the fuel pump. Everything nicely accessible. Um, doesn't look too bad to work on. They even cram the spare wheel here and a tiny little battery. Um, but yeah, it all looks pretty decent to me. Let's fire it up. It doesn't look like a belt driven cam belt on this, but that runs quite sweetly I think. Got the heater box here, there's the coil. Um, ah, telling you how to tighten the head screws. But yes, it is a timing belt in there. Alternators buried down the back. Perhaps that's not quite so easy to access, but it looks good. Right, let's see if we can get these wipers to work. Oh yeah, there we go. No programmed wash wipe. And uh, not the most effort there. And you'll notice the wipers are set for left-hand drive still. They never bothered swapping them for um, right-hand drive. Uh, we've got a bit of a triangle of doom going on here where the um, that, that one doesn't cross into the arc of that one and a massive corner of disappointment right in front of the driver. So um, that's not ideal. All this is unswept. So looking at traffic lights, quite difficult. Uh, we should probably do a rear wiper test. I'll, I'll, I'll just turn you around. That's the way to play it, isn't it? That's very noisy. Don't appear to have any rear screen wash working. And also it doesn't park quite at the bottom of its travel as it should. Nonetheless, um, it does function. Uh, heater fan. Whoa, you know when that's on full. But yeah, even this um, little panel bank is um, kind of moving around a bit. Um, you could call it quite sweet, maybe. Um, but now you can see the um, dials here. Uh, if I flash the headlamps, the blue light comes on a bit. Uh, indicators. Very, very quiet. Um, little switch there. Oh, it's got a switch for the lights. That's quite fancy. Uh, right, 
I'd better get you strapped up and uh, we can go for an actual drive. Right then, how does this little car handle? First of all, the pedals are quite offset. Um, I find it a little distressing, especially as the pedal, the pedals don't look very different because there's a rubber on the throttle pedal. Uh, I keep on thinking it's the brake pedal. So it's quite rorty. Um, into first, I'll just readjust the gear lever because that seems to move. And It's um, entirely undramatic to drive, um, he says, not being able to get first gear. But yeah, it's certainly not peaceful. Sounds a little to me like the ignition timing might be off a bit. Feels a little flat for the um, amount of noise generated. Just take it easy over that wooden bridge. passenger mirror, the interior mirror is um, pretty good really. Oh well, that might be the end of the road. Okay we can test the turning circle and uh, pretty decent really. Um, yeah, this is um, all good news in here. That um, 
it's almost like elephant skin plastic is uh, yeah it's got given off a very strong communist vibe as are the fiberboard uh, door cards but in the budget tests of the day the Yugo usually did quite well because it just kind of works and it works in a more conventional way the press were never all that kind about the rear engine Skodas or the rather ancient Ladas and having driven a Lada earlier this year a Lada Reva that really did feel like a 1960s car this doesn't feel like a 1960s car even though a fair dose of the underpinnings um, kind of hark back to the uh, Fiat 128 which I think came out in 1969 127 in the early 70s um, it, perhaps it's a sign of how uh, almost ahead of its time the 127 was but this feel quite so horribly dated. It's even not all that bad over the speed humps. You can hear children screaming with delight as I drive past. Possibly. Well, I mean there were even sporty body kitted versions of these cars in the UK. You can get it with a quite tasty little um, body kit. And there was even a convertible version which was marketed for a very short time. Sadly, the Yugo story was rather ended by the um, civil war that broke out in the former Yugoslavia. And uh, th there were sanctions um, on the countries as they split apart and the horrors of war really began to kick in. And that was the end of the line for Yugo in Western Europe. They just vanished. Yeah, um, it, it's not great on hills. Doesn't even feel like that much of a hill, but it's got nothing, which leads me to suspect that it is a little down on um, power. So I think I'm going to end this little test there because the view backwards is wonderful. Well there you go, another amazing Kiwi view and an interesting test of a car I really didn't expect to find in New Zealand, the Yugo 55A. Uh, it's not a great car, but it's certainly not a terrible car, a long way from it I'd say. Um, certain aspects could be a little better, but then you can say that of any small car of this era. Um, I mean, one of these or an Austin Metro, um, I would find that a difficult call to make at the risk of um, uh, inducing the ire of um, Steph from iDriver Classic, but um, that kind of does everything a Metro does, apart from the handling, because Metros handle like little minis. But yeah, I, I, if I had to buy a bargain car in 1989, I think one of these would fit the bill very nicely. 
not that anyone should buy a new car because that's a ridiculous notion um, but yeah I, I liked it found it very charming cheap is definitely cheerful so I shall say thank you very much for watching don't forget the Hudnut store has delightful objects of um, clothing and stickers and mugs and beanie hats which you don't need at the moment in New Zealand and uh, I shall say I shall look forward to seeing you in a future video somewhere I might be able to speak properly blah, 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 blah. farewell <laughs>